And now, the James Webb Space Telescope is identifying objects from the Dark Ages that, according to our best estimates, are fully formed galaxies. But how is that even possible? Since the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, we've been gifted with some of the most incredible images of the universe we've ever seen. It's shown us our solar system in ways we couldn't imagine, even revealing clouds on Saturn's moon Titan, composed of methane but fascinating nonetheless. We've also detected possible signs of life on an exoplanet just 24 light years from Earth. Scientists now believe it's only a matter of time before we find life beyond our planet. Isn't that exciting? Before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe to Space Exploring to stay updated on all things space. But let's dive into the recent discovery that's causing a stir in the scientific community. You might recall how we've discussed ancient galaxies found by the telescope that are confusing cosmologists. These galaxies appear to have formed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, which challenges the established timeline of the universe. The telescope has even identified galaxy candidates older than Maisie's galaxy, one of the oldest known to date. And then, the telescope captured an image that is only deep in the puzzle in cosmology. Recently, the James Webb Telescope was used to measure the universe's expansion rate, leading to some mind-boggling conclusions. It suggests that we might need new physics to explain the universe as we know it. The image in question shows pulsating stars that give us clues about the motion of a spiral galaxy, NGC 5584, located 75 million light-years away. The data reveals that the universe is expanding faster than the leading theories predicted. This discovery clashes with the well-established standard model of cosmology, which outlines how the universe evolved after the Big Bang. Scientists are now in a race to understand what this means for our understanding of the cosmos. Could it be that the expansion rate of the universe is much faster than anticipated? This brings us to the Hubble constant, a crucial number that informs us about the expansion speed of the universe. This discrepancy between the methods of calculating the Hubble constant is known as the Hubble tension, and it persists even with the more precise data from the James Webb Telescope. What does this mean for the future of cosmology? It's a question that continues to perplex scientists as they grapple with data that challenges some of the most fundamental assumptions about the universe's formation and evolution. The stars in that galaxy, specifically galaxy UHZ1, have drawn attention from astronomers. They observe distinctive signs of a growing black hole only 470 million years after the Big Bang occurred. This discovery may help unravel a cosmic mystery about supermassive black holes, suggesting their presence in infant galaxies during the earliest phase of the universe. Shortly after the Big Bang, black holes come in two types, stellar mass and supermassive. This is quite self-explanatory. Stellar mass black holes are about 10 to 100 times the mass of our Sun, while a supermassive black hole, as the name implies, can be millions or even billions of times heavier. The existence of these massive black holes in the center of nearly all galaxies, including our own, has intrigued astrophysicists, in part because their origins are unclear. Before we continue, don't forget to like and subscribe to Space Exploring for more updates and videos. The new report doesn't solve this mystery completely, but it makes a strong case that, at least for UHC1, the supermassive black hole didn't grow gradually but was supermassive from the very beginning. The report uses data from both the Chandra X-ray Observatory and the James Webb Space Telescope. This is cosmic archaeology at its best, using ancient light in the X-ray and infrared parts of the spectrum. The light from UHZ-1's massive black hole was emitted 13.2 billion years ago, about 400 million years after the Big Bang. According to the observations in the paper, the supermassive black hole at its core has roughly the same mass as the entire galaxy, an incredible revelation. The supermassive black hole in UHZ-1 is fascinating not just for its mass but because it's the first instance of what Yale University scientists call an outside black hole. They theorize that such black holes could form from the collapse of massive gas clouds, and now there is evidence supporting this hypothesis. This discovery is just one of what promises to be a long list of groundbreaking research about the early universe that Webb will continue to deliver. Now that the telescope has started its science operations, working alongside Hubble, 
Chandra, and other observatories, were likely to uncover even more fascinating secrets about our universe. Additionally, the telescope is working with TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, the successor to Kepler. And it's catching up fast, new research reveals eight more TESS planet candidates, all of which are super-Earths. TESS's planet hunting techniques are more refined than Kepler's, as it's designed specifically to detect exoplanets transiting in front of bright stars in Earth's neighborhood. By using TESS data, ground-based telescope data, and high-resolution imaging, scientists have identified eight potential super-Earths. Six of these planets are excellent candidates for habitability, as they fall within their star's habitable zones. However, a star's powerful radiation, particularly X-ray and UV emissions, could still strip away a planet's atmosphere over time, regardless of its location in the habitable zone. This brings up the concept of the cosmic shoreline, a boundary between planets that have retained their atmospheres and those that have lost them due to XUV radiation from their stars. Out of the six potentially habitable super-Earths, two fall on the better side of the cosmic shoreline. These findings are so promising that the two planets, Toy 771b and Toy 459b, have been selected for further atmospheric study with the James Webb Space Telescope. Scientists have even gone ahead and simulated the atmospheres of these eight super-Earths to predict what Webb might find when it observes them. The results are intriguing, showing signs of carbon dioxide, water, and, most notably, methane. Methane could potentially be a biosignature, though there's much uncertainty. Discovering it in an exoplanet's atmosphere would help scientists understand its origin and role, but actual Webb observations are needed to confirm these atmospheric findings. Keep your fingers crossed. Recently, using the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers investigated K218b, an exoplanet with a mass 8.6 times that of Earth. They discovered carbon-based molecules, including methane and carbon dioxide. This finding aligns with recent studies suggesting that K218b might be a high sea and exoplanet, possibly featuring a hydrogen-rich atmosphere and a surface covered by a water ocean. Initial insights into the atmosphere of K218b were gained through observations from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, which led to further research and a new understanding of the K218b system. K218b orbits a cool dwarf star known as K218, situated 120 light-years from Earth in the LEO constellation. Exoplanets like K218b, with sizes between Earth and Neptune, are unlike any planets in our solar system. The possibility that K218b is a high sea and exoplanet is particularly exciting, as some astronomers believe these worlds might be prime environments to search for life. The presence of methane and carbon dioxide, along with the scarcity of ammonia, supports the theory that K218b could have a water ocean beneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Early web observations have also hinted at the possible detection of dimethyl sulfide, DMS, a molecule on Earth primarily produced by living organisms, mostly by phytoplankton in marine environments. However, confirming the presence of DMs on K218b will require additional observations. Webb's upcoming data will hopefully confirm whether DMs is present in significant quantities on the planet. The research team plans to continue their work, using Webb's MIRI spectrograph to validate these findings and gain more insights into the environmental conditions on K218b. NASA has stated that their ultimate goal is to identify life on a habitable exoplanet, a discovery that would forever change how we see our place in the universe. Dr. Michelle Fowler, a NASA scientist, recently revealed that top-secret conferences have been held to discuss how to handle the discovery of extraterrestrial life. Speaking at an event in New York City, Dr. Fowler emphasized her belief that it's only a matter of time before we find alien life, given the vastness of the universe. NASA is taking proactive steps to prepare for this monumental discovery. The classified meetings have allowed scientists to discuss protocols for communicating with potential alien civilizations. But whether we'll encounter advanced extraterrestrials like those depicted in movies is uncertain, if we find life beyond Earth, it's more likely to be microscopic. Now, we wait patiently for more data from K218b, the Trappist star system, and our nearest star system neighbor, Proxima Centauri. It's an exciting time for science and humanity, a phase of grand transition, with major leaps in discovery waiting for us. What do you think? 
Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Space Exploring.